Joining us now is Ken Mullis of Mullis and Company. Ken, it's great to see you again. Welcome. Good to see you, Sarah. So t tough market. It's not like deals aren't happening, but boy, have they slowed down. What what is it like from your perspective? Yeah, they have slowed down, and I think it, it may, maybe it's like every other industry. Maybe we have a supply chain problem, and our supply, I guess, in M and A, a lot of it is finance, especially in the leverage loan market and transactions that uh, that involve less than you know less than investment grade credit, and and it's just almost impossible now to get a deal financed. So that's that's a problem in the short term. When and how do you see that turning around? Well, look, I, it's it's kind of a strange world out there. You know, we have a mid threes unemployment, the banks. I listen to some of the bank calls. There's almost no credit problems in the system. Bank capitalizations are fine. Um, I think there's a extremely volatile market out right now. Uh, you know, the post Jay Powell's com uh, speech at Jackson Hole, it was just a rapid increase in volatility. Look at the last, you know, you can see the last few days in the market. Um, and there's been a real change in interest rates and risk ratings for leveraged credits. There's a significant amount of transactions that are still hung in bridge loans from the bank in the banking system that have to get cleared. I can't tell you the exact day it'll happen, but I will tell you there's a real feeling out there that this is con it's containable to a time frame. I don't know if that's 10 weeks or four months or. But but it, it just feels like there's a, 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 a wave that has to get behind us of revaluation, reversion of interest rates, and resetting of valuations. Yeah, it comes back to the whole Fed pause, which we were just talking about, as, as far as what your market outlook is. Depends on how much more you think there is left to do for the Fed and, what, and ultimately what the next move is. We played a soundbite when, when you were with me in Davos in May saying you don't think there's a recession coming, and, and you've been right so far. I mean, we've had negative growth, but really hasn't felt that way. Recessionary, the unemployment picture is pretty good. What, have you changed your, your tune about what you think is happening in this economy? Well, I do think the Jackson Hole speech made things a little tougher out there, but it was interesting. When you and I met, I think, Jay Powell, you, we, we discussed the fact, and I felt that the Fed was going to be tough. I felt no uh, chairman wants to go down and release inflation back into the world. I thought personally he, that it would be uh, that he would want to stamp it out pretty dramatically. You know, I look back and I think the thing that might have just shocked everybody, including, I bet, the Fed chairman, was when he took the fire extinguisher out in June, July, that we were shocked by the Inflation Reduction Act, which I don't think any, everybody thought government spending was going to be shut off. And I think, you know, all of a sudden you had the Fed, you know, with a fire extinguisher and I think and, and, and uh, policy, um, you know, policy from the federal government throwing another trillion dollars of, of gasoline on the fire. I think looking back, uh, um, that might be what's causing this tremendous clash hmm. of the Fed with the economy. In other words, it was not so much an Inflation Reduction Act as promised. You think that's that's a spark here? You know, spending a trillion dollars is often not an inflation reduction um, move. I, I, I won't. It, it was the Inflation Reduction Act. I read it. That's what it said it was. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I don't know many worlds in which spending a trillion dollars would result in lower inflation.